Greetings and good evening to all of you. First Virginia Avenue Missionary Baptist Church family and to those that are joining us from other persuasions, we're delighted that you are here with us as we begin our midweek uh, Bible study. We have a brief program that, that goes on or it takes place with the devotions. First, we will have selection from this praise team under the direction of Brother Louis Lipscomb. Uh, then we'll have prayer and scripture from our deacons, another selection, and then we will deal with the study of a lesson, and we're using the Sunday School lesson, which is for June 12. So we ask that you uh, pray with us as we go through this uh, evening Bible study. Pray for Pastor Duncan, and uh, we bring you greetings from him. And on behalf of Pastor Duncan, we present to you the midweek Bible study for the First Virginia Avenue Missionary Baptist Church for this, this week. Thank you. Can't you feel it? Don't you see it? It's the presence of God in this place. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is the presence of God. Lifts every burden, destroys every yoke. The king of the fire, of every living soul, sits fifty calls. Your presence gives, now there is no fear. Can't you feel it? Can't you feel it? Don't you see it? Don't you see it? It's the presence, it's the presence of, God. of God in this place. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is the presence of God. Lift every burden, stores every yoke, kindles the fire of every living soul. Since Pentecost, your presence near, now there is no fear. Fill us with power 
I'll be reading from Mark chapter 13, verses 28 through 37. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender, it put her forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nay, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. May God have a blessing to hearers and doers of his words. Amen. Amen. Good evening, saints. Good evening. It's prayer time. With all hearts open and all minds clear. Dear Heavenly Father, to an all wise and eternal God, once again you have allowed us to come into your presence. And we thank you for that, dear Heavenly Father. We come into your presence bringing you Thanks for everything you've done before for us. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you allow your holy, sweet spirit to anoint this place this evening. Spread your love among us, dear Heavenly Father, because in your word you tell us to love one another. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you continue to lead us and guide us in that area so that we can be obedient <laughs> to your word. We thank you, dear Lord, for another day's journey. Thank you. Another day to heaven, Father, that we can just bask in your glory. Another day to heaven, Father, we can just look up into, up into the heavens, look what's going on around us, and just give you thanks, give you honor, and give you glory, and give you praise. I thank you for my family, dear heaven, Father, and we all thank you for our families. When all the, quote, dust clears in the midnight hour when things aren't going well, we ask that you continue to bless us and we find that blessing, that love just in our families. And so we thank you for that, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we living in a world, dear Heavenly Father, that's, that's just full of sin. We know we live in a sinful world, dear Heavenly Father, but time now, even us as Christians, sometimes we wonder what's going on. And so we just ask your Heavenly Father that you continue to strengthen us, <clears throat> lead us, and guide us. Continue to lead us to Heavenly Father that we might be able to strengthen our faith and let our light shine so that other people can see us. And not necessarily see us, to see the you in us. For it's not us to Heavenly Father, it's the Spirit in us. And we pray to Heavenly Father we continue on that we, we, we don't have fear because we know, dear Heavenly Father, you rose when you rose. You rose with all power. And we know you have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. Yeah, and so, as the song is saying, dear Heavenly Father, hold back the night. 
just give us the strength to go on. Give us the strength to go on to do that which is your will. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, when it's all said and done, that what we have done and said on this side is pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask a special prayer for this church. We will soon be celebrating the mortgage burning. And like the pastor says, sometimes these blessings only come every once in a while, dear Heavenly Father. So we just want to thank you for allowing us to be able to stand in your glory and just give you thanks for what you've done for this church. Thank you for our pastor, Pastor Duncan, thank you. who has led us in that effort, dear Heavenly Father, and given, given you God all glory and all praise for everything that we've done. Thank you for all those who have worked in the vineyards to make these things happen. Now, dear Heavenly Father, we continue to go on. We ask that you forgive us of our many sins. We have all come short of God's glory. And sometimes, dear Heavenly Father, we've, we've been down. But instead of punishing us and keeping us down, again, we just ask you, hold back the night. Just give us another chance to Heavenly Father get it right. So we ask you, please forgive us our many sins. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And dear Heavenly Father, we just say this, that for any praise you ever come our way, we will be careful not to take any glory whatsoever, but to give you honor and glory and all praise. These and all other blessings we ask in your holy and righteous name, dear God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Preaching, and the crowd was standing near. The congregation was singing a tune in a voice that was loud and clear. You know, the crowd that stood around him, they were crying. I could plainly see for the song that they sang was touching. They were singing, Nero, my God, nearer to thee. They kept singing, Nero, my God, to thee. I want to be nearer, nearer to thee. They kept singing nearer, my, my, my God to thee. I want to be nearer, nearer to thee. They kept on singing nearer, my God to thee. Nearer, nearer to thee. I want to be nearer. Near all to my God, to thee. Songs have a feeling. There's a story in every song that we sing. Songs have been known to lift heavy burdens. If all of our troubles to God we truly bring. And if you are a Christian, you ought not be ashamed to lift up your voices and sing in my Jesus' name. We ought to be glad to sing nearer, nearer, my God, nearer to thee. They kept singing nearer. My God, to thee I want to be nearer, nearer to thee. They kept singing nearer. My God, to thee I want to be nearer, nearer to thee. They kept singing nearer. My, my God, to thee it's nearer, nearer to thee. 
I want to be near you to my God to thee. Greetings again, and welcome to First Virginia Avenue Missionary Baptist Church Midweek Bible Study. Our Bible study tonight is a continuation in the book of Isaiah. We were in Isaiah last week uh, for a Sunday school lesson. And today the topic or the subject for discussion comes to us from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 11. And the title of the lesson, God Foretells Redemption. Redemption. In order that we be on the same page as we talk about these verses, we are talking about, when we say redemption, we're talking about to recover or to be rescued, to be ransomed, uh, something of that nature. You've been re reduced from and relieved of some burden that has occurred and has existed in your life as a result of some mistake either you or someone else has made. So today, as we look at this, we are thinking about what happens, and, and before we get into the verses as such, one of the key points that we have to remember is that really this ties in with what Pastor Duncan has been talking about or two Sundays ago in, in uh, First Peter, talking about the angels being concerned about the problems and the mistreatment of Jesus and them not understanding why he was being buffeted and scourged and hung on a cross for the benefit or to redeem mankind or human beings. They couldn't understand this because they are not guilty of the problems uh, that we experience. And as a result of that, this is something that's completely foreign to them. Uh, and in that passage of scripture when Pastor Duncan taught, uh, preached two Sundays ago, had to do with, in First Peter, had to do with the angels inquiring as to why Jesus was going through that for mankind. And we know that man is made a little lower than angels. Angels are not uh, guilty of violations and sinful acts as we are, so there's no need for redemption for them. They don't understand this. They are, they are always loyal. They are faithful. They are righteous and they are true. But we are not. And as a result of that, there are things that we do that are foreign to them. And they just couldn't understand it. And this really is a, is a continuation of the thought. Even though it's Old Testament, uh, can, Peter is, is presenting this, trying to get the people to understand the disturbed nature that the angel ex angels experience because they can't see why they're Jesus that they love that's been in the heavens with them all their existing time of existence why he's down here on the earth being kicked around like a criminal being mistreated going through all these things because of a man well it there are many misconceptions that we have concerning what happens in and, and how the scriptures read. For instance, sometimes you hear people say that uh, they sing like angels or they preach like Paul. I know Paul preached, but angels don't sing. <laughs> and, and, and when we think about that, it, it, there, there's no need for them to sing. Do, when we sing, is we are showing our appreciation and our thanks to God for rescuing us redeeming us, ransoming us or recovering us from something that we've, we've gotten ourselves into or someone has gotten us into. And as a result of that, we are singing praises. We sing praises to God, saying thanks to him for uh, rescuing us from the troubles that we're in. So when people say to you that he or she sings like an angel, then put a big question. Question mark, Brother Morton. <laughs> he said, put a pen, pen in it or something. Because angels don't sing. Why should they sing? They've never made mistakes. They've never sinned. They, don't, they have not missed the mark, so there's no need for them to be redeemed. But in this text today, in Isaiah chapter 49, 
it says that God foretells the redemption. It's a, it's a bit confusing when you start reading the first verses of this particular chapter because it, it reads as if it's talking about the children of Israel as a nation in some verses. Others it's talking about some individual that is replacing them. And this is actually what takes place, but ultimately the situation or the picture that's being painted in this text has to do with the redemption of mankind by none other than Jesus Christ, the only one who's sinless and able to perform the kind of acts that are necessary to rescue, to redeem, and to restore us when we've fallen or when we've missed the mark. Well, the first verse in this text today, Isaiah 49 verse 1, reads thusly. It says, listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. You remember individual prophets, and Isaiah was assigned duties and was called before he came forth from his mother's womb. But this thing builds up and it crescendos into a point where it's the credit and the comments and the emphasis is placed on what Jesus does by coming to this earth to rescue us from our fallenness. So he says, listen to me, listen, O Isles. And, and he points this out. When you think about what, what's going on there, in many cases, messages are presented to people and they, they're just for the people, the up and in the higher echelons, those small little creatures and little nobodies, we call them at times, or are not considered in, in many of the points that are made and presented in some of the texts, I mean, not the text, but the lessons that we get from individuals. But here he wants them to know that this message that comes from God through Jesus Christ and his rescue of us doesn't leave anyone out. All the little islands, we get all the continents on the globe, and every little island, whether it looks like nothing other than a speck on the map, it is to be included because God's love does not ex exclude any of his creation. So he says, listen, O isles. And that's the smallest of the land masses. And it, it covers the, the major ones as well. So listen to me, all ye in distant lands. Pay attention who are far away. And just because you happen not to be seated on the front row of some profound and up and going church doesn't mean that you are not to hear or the messages that comes from the minister from the word of God. It doesn't mean that it's not for you. So in verse 2 he says, And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver has he hid me. Indicating that what God has done is polished and made ready the individual instrument that he is sending forth to perform the duties. God prepares any and all and every one of us for the task that he assigns us to do. It's up to us to apply ourselves and to use what he gives us in order that we might accomplish the things that God wants us to accomplish. As we all know, the Hebrew people or Israel, as it points out in these verses in this text, is, is talking about Israel and he keeps making comments, of, Isaiah does, about Israel. And it's confusing as to whether he's talking about the nation of Israel or an individual who is a resident of the nation of Israel. So the point is that he is just, he's just using he, the, the nation as such uh, because that is the title, uh, the group of people that, that the, the individual is from. 
Even Jesus Christ came into the Jewish family, was born into the Jewish family. So the point is that it, since the Jewish people were God's chosen people, or they are God's chosen people, to present the message of God to the world was the assignment and the reason God chose them. They were to receive the message from Almighty God and then to share it with everyone around about them. But they dropped the ball. They failed to carry through on things. So then God could, we could say that God repented. And what we mean by God repenting, not that he has sinned, not that he's done anything that's wrong, but the, when, we, when the Bible talks about God repenting, it means he executes another option. Here we are in a situation where God is, if you, if you are on the football field, you know, and, and for some reason the play that has been called is broken because the defense either anticipated it uh, great, more greatly or larger and larger extent than that you were anticipating, so you, you execute another option or another plan. And this is exactly what God does. And this is when the Bible says that God repented. It means that he executes another option. His message and his, his program will go forward. And he'll use me and you if we allow him to. If we are stubborn and, and disrespectful and disloyal and, and uh, we don't want to be used by him, then he doesn't go to the back room and pout and say that my plan didn't go over and I'm defeated today and we have to go back to the drawing board and come up with another plan for tomorrow. He just executes another option. Uh, and so that's what he, he always does. And in this case, and this is why these verses are a little confusing because he is saying he has brought forth a man, an individual, a single entity person to carry on the message since the children of Israel have dropped the ball and they didn't carry on in the manner in which they were instructed and the way they should. And when we think about that, we have to compare what happened to the children of Israel with what happened to us as a people of color in this country. The information is that approximately 200 years existed or occurred when we as a Black people, the Negro people, were in slavery in this country. It was as if there was no way out. Everything they did or thought to do, there was always something that interfered and stopped their progress. But they, what, was, what was a common thing among them was that when they had messages to get out, when they were restricted to communicate with their fellow man, fellow workers, the master didn't argue about them singing. And the fact remains, even to this day, is because he doesn't understand the message and song that gets communicated between a child of God and God himself. And here they are in, in the fields, the cotton fields or the corn fields and wherever they are, and they want a message out, they just, they would start singing. There's going to be a meeting tonight. Anything, you know, to get the message out that things are going to take place. Well, the man who is riding around with the whip on the horse and he hears them singing, he thinks all is well. They're singing, so they must be happy. Well, when the children of Israel were taken captive into Babylon, and that was what the lesson was about last week, was that they had... Um, God brought Babylon in. Nebuchadnezzar came in and captured uh, Jerusalem. The hope was he cared all of the people there, including the, the, the three Hebrew boys and, and Daniel and all, to the, to the land where they were in captivity down there for 70 years. And we as a black people were in slavery for 200 years. And it winds up being something that is, is, is a stigma and a word, slavery and servitude, winds up being something that's nasty sounding to the ears of us because of what we understand and realize that our forefathers went through. But what happened with the children of Israel in Babylon is, be, is that after they, even though they were in captivity there, they became complacent and enjoyed and really 
migrated and mutated to a lifestyle that was like the Babylonians. And after Cyrus overran Babylon, the Medes and the Persians overran Babylon, and King Cyrus let them out and go back to their country, to, to Jerusalem, to build a, rebuild the temple and the wall. Some of them did not go. It was only a small remnant who went back because there, there, there's the picture. Satan makes his life that he wants for us exciting. And the reason you and I sin repeatedly is because it's fun. It's fun when we sin. Or the things that we do that are sinful, they're fun. And if, and if we're doing something that's fun, why leave that? You know, we want everybody to be happy to have fun, right? So then many of the people that were in captivity in Babylon, in servitude, adopted the lifestyle of the, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, and they wanted to stay there even though they were given their freedom, the privilege to leave and go back and rebuild the temple and to rebuild the wall. They chose to stay there because they were having fun. Satan is clever and he knows exactly where our weaknesses are. So as we go forward in this text and this lesson is in verse 3 it says, And they said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. For Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught. Well, I've done all this for nothing. It's all in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. The understanding, the realization that God is supreme and he is sovereign is what we have to understand and realize because regardless of what goes on in our life, the ultimate goal is to be in the presence of Almighty God. And in order to do that, we need to get our act together and accept what he has for us. Uh, and and, and in, in doing that, we must understand that we have to do away with some of those things that are fun for and to us. Uh, are you willing to move forward on God's promise? Or are you staying behind, enjoying the fun in Babylon and in joining the people in their way of life? Well, the question is something that we must ask ourselves on an individual basis, and it, it, it is not a thing that, that we do on the coattails of grandmama or grandpapa or the pastor or anyone else. It's an individual commitment in order to be able to receive what God has for us. Then in verse 6 it says, And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. And what that is saying to us, and it spells out to, dis to displace and dispel the idea and the attitude that the Hebrew people had was that salvation was only for them. And even the Judaizers in persons that were accepted uh, and given the privilege to, to become a part of the family of God, they, they taught and wanted to make the people understand and feel that you had to become a Jew first before you could become a Christian or follower of Christ. So the message for, from God for Israel and, and definitely from, from Jesus Christ was that it's not just for the Jews but for the Gentiles as well. So that means that that's the other side of the coin or the, the second phase of the matter, which includes anybody that isn't a Jew. And praise God, that, that's where I come in. Yeah? That's where you come in. You're not, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And you, whatever the nationality heading or title you may wear, if, if you are not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And the scriptures say, that the message of God, the love of God, and the desire of God is that we are to be included 
the Gentiles as well as the Jew to receive the light that is designed and prepared by Almighty God for all of his children. Then in verse 7, he says, Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom nations abhor, to a servant of rulers, kings and shall see and arise, princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. No one is left out. Within the Jewish segment, within the Gentile segment, as he talked about at first, the little owls or the little eyes, the big U's, everybody is to be included. He is, he's, he's not excluding anyone, and he wants everyone to realize and understand that the message and the love of God includes all of creation. And there again is the thing that was one of the confusing parts with the angels. The angels were, the, were created by God, and it, it, it's another myth that we get from them in greeting cards. At certain times of the year, you, you may have gotten a card where there's a little baby with diapers with wings. Don't, 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 don't. That God didn't make any, there, there is no infancy angels. He created them, if he, when he created an angel, if, it's, if he created it six foot four, 199 pounds, that's the way they'll be forever. They don't, there's no baby angels that grow. We grow up through, and through a, from infancy through adolescent youth and in adulthood. But that's because of sin that's entered, and that's the manner in which we are repopulating the earth. But the angels don't follow through with that. Another one of those confusing things, you know, and then we carry it forward. And I don't know whether we, we would call that satanic, that they make greeting cards with, with little baby angels with wings. <laughs> Just taint true. <laughs> well, here we are with the situation as he is, 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 is Isaiah is presenting it, and that regardless of what your status might be, he points out that the kings and the princes, the rulers of, of the land, are persons that need to receive the salvation of God and the messages to be presented to them, regardless of how high on the ladder they happen to be. Or how small, as in verse 1, they might be uh, even considered to be an isle, uh, an island. And so he's, he's pointing out that all persons are to be considered in, in the plan of salvation that God has for us. Verse 9 says, that thou mayest say to prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness. Show thyself or yourselves. Uh, they shall feed in the ways, and their pasture shall be in all high places. Verse 10, they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away and my highways shall be exalted. He is pointing out to us that wherever you start, whatever is before you, God is going to pre prepare and pave the way in order for there not to be pits and valleys, but that you will be able to sail through smoothly on the plan that he has for your life. So in other words, he, he, he says there that the, 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 the valleys are going to be built up. So the highway that you travel across, you won't have to go down in the depressed section. Nor do you have to worry about scaling the highest mountain because the highway, he says, is going to be on a level plane. And isn't that like someone who loves you, who designs a pattern, even the road that you travel, on your way to eternal life with him? 
is one that is leveled out and is smooth in order that your traveling might be one that flows. And you know, when we check out of this earth, when, these, when the spirit and our soul departs this body, the escorts that come from heaven to take us to our glorious destination travels on a path that is minus interruptions. Satan thought that he could talk God into letting him have Moses when he died out there in, in, in the wilderness. Uh, and uh, God didn't even let him know where he buried him. And someone had said, don't mess with God. And that is a true matter here. For those of us that he loves and he loves all of us, then he will provide for us and he makes the way smooth and the sailing smooth for us if we'll only get on the path. There are other roads that we can travel, but they are our choice not to follow the one that God has laid out for us. And if we are smart, if we are wise enough to understand what is offered for the future eternally, we can be the recipients and the beneficiaries of a smooth sailing, traveling road minus valleys and mountains on our way to eternity with Almighty God. And that is the message that the Sunday School lesson presented where God redeems us and he tells Isaiah to present this to the people regardless of where you are, if you can turn your life around and head in, in the direction that he has pad, planned for you, the redemption that he has for you is one that will give you a road that is smooth for traveling and it is eternal. And my, as I close, I'll, I'll say this. You may have heard me say this before, but eternity, is, is, it blows my mind to think about it, but uh, sometimes I can grasp in stories what helped me to get over the hump, so to speak, and levels out some of these traveling paths. And this has to do with, the, with eternity and how long that happens to be. If we had a little bird that was commissioned to take every grain of sand from every beachhead on the face of the earth to heaven, and he could pick up only one grain of sand at a time, and it would take him a hundred years to travel from earth to heaven with that one grain of sand and drop it off and then come back and get another. By the time he emptied every beachhead on the face of the earth, eternity would just begin. I don't know about you, but I, I'm uh, anxious, can't wait. We don't have to worry about the, the adjustments of the, of the weather and, or anything. Just follow Jesus around. So God foretells redemption. And, he, and if, even when we have fallen into the clutches of Satan, off the path that God designs for us, he is faithful and just to redeem us if we'll only believe. That's the lesson for tonight. God bless you.
Thank you, Father, for this another day. Thank you for a time of fellowship, a time of study of your word, a time of singing praises to you, giving you thanks, giving you praise for the glory that you pour out on us so generously and graciously. We thank you, Father, for each person that has been here a part of this service this evening. We ask that you continue to strengthen us and use us to your glory day by day. Bless this activity that has taken place in total. And may something be, may resonate with someone uh, that has heard the song, the prayer, the scripture, or the study presentation from uh, the Sunday school lesson. It will give in, uh, increased strength, fortitude, direction, and guidance to move forward and to move closer to you and to be what you'd have us to be day by day. For you desire that none should perish and you want to use us to accomplish that mission. So we thank you, Father, for using us this day. Help us to be all that you'd have us to be. We pray your blessings on Pastor Duncan and his family. Continue to strengthen him and allow him to go forward and continue forward in lifting up your holy name as he proclaims the gospel uh, from your holy word. Strengthen us and use us to your glory. And we'll forever give you the praise and the thanks shall be thine. For it's in the powerful name of Jesus that we pray. And now may the grace of God and the love of Jesus, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us until we meet again. It's in the powerful name of Jesus that we say, Amen. And the church sings. Let the church sing. church say amen God has spoken let the church say amen let the church say
bless you.